God's greatest gift, 2 Corinthians 9.15. What was your favorite Christmas gift uh, growing up? What was your least favorite? I have no idea on either of these. I never got something I didn't like in one way or another. I guess my favorite that I remember was a toy submarine. And I was 22 years old when I got that. <laughs> and I remember definitely my Wolfman figurine that I got when I was about 10 years old. I loved the Wolfman and my mom and dad. That's weird, isn't it? They got me a Wolfman figurine and I love that thing. <clears throat> anyway, I went, I went around the house pretending I was Wolfman. Wolfman Jack. Yeah, Wolfman Jack. Well, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> I miss my calling. <laughs> you know, as an adult, I was always working for the Postal Service. I was just glad to get Christmas over with. Yeah. This time of year was terrible. And Christmas gifts, anything was great. Just get it to me. That means Christmas is here and I, everything's over. Literally, the Postal Service will be covered up with packages on December 24th. On December 26th, you got nothing. That's unbelievable. That's the way it used to be. I don't know how it is now. And thank God I don't know how it is now. Thank you, Lord, for retirement. It's the greatest job I've ever had is retirement. Uh, God is, I'm sorry if you guys that aren't retired yet, uh, but it's coming, believe me. My dad said, as soon as you get 20, son, next thing you know, you'll be 50. Then the next thing you know, you'll be retired. I said, oh, that's forever. Well, here I am. God has given us a gift that is beyond belief, if you think about it. And believe it or not, the vast majority of people have gotten the greatest gift of all time in the history of the universe and have never bothered to claim it. Thanks be to God alone. 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be to God and Him alone, the Apostle Paul says. John 3, 16. For God, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thanks be to God, because God so loved the world. He gave us this great gift. It all starts with God and ends with God. His love for us. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Think about that in these last days, in these tumultuous times, in these days of evil upon us. Thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 2.14. And maketh manifest the Savior of His knowledge by us in every place. We owe God everything. Life, happiness, joy, peace, love, health, home, and family. <clears throat> but the greatest thing to be thankful for is Jesus Christ who created everything, holds everything together, and died for our sins upon a cruel cross. Do you thank God for Jesus? That's the first thing you should do every day before your feet hit the floor. You should thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ because His salvation didn't end overnight. It continues, <clears throat> excuse me, day after day, hour after hour, week after week, year after year, His salvation continues. There's so much evil in the world. <coughs> How can we even have peace at all? I coughed into this hand, so don't shake this hand when we after church. Uh, Joe Biden does that. He coughs into his right hand and then shakes hands with everybody. Uh, are you comparing yourself to Joe Biden? <laughs> Ew, sorry about that. Uh, there's so much evil in the world. How can we have any peace at all? I was listening to a program on child trafficking. And we were talking about that this morning in Sunday school a little bit. And how can the Lord allow this to go on? How much suffering for children in this world? Pray for those who are working to put an end to this uh, horrible thing and slow it down, just to slow it down some. I learned that Atlanta, Georgia is the hub for the United States for child trafficking. It goes all the way to Washington, D.C., up to New York, and then gets to Dallas. And then from Dallas, it goes to L.A. L.A. is a hub that leads to all places in the world. No wonder God bless America. How can God bless America when we're the world's leader in child trafficking and abortions? What we do to children in this country and we stand up and say, God bless America. God has cursed America 
But for our sake, the remnant, He gives us all a chance. He gives America a chance to repent. Listen, let me tell you one thing. One thing I've learned from listening to this child trafficking program, and I already knew this, keep your children off Facebook. I can't tell you that enough. There's thousands of people looking for your children. Quit it. This is how they discover your children and seek them out. They want a certain look, a certain hair color, a certain eye color, a certain skin tone, a certain age. Please don't be uninformed on this. You're advertising your child to child traffickers when you put them on Facebook. Stop it. It's not safe. Yes, we know your children are beautiful, and they are. And I love seeing pictures of them. But remember, it's not just people that love them that are looking at them. There's people that want to use them and abuse them. Well, how can they find them? They can. It's easy. It's easy to find who you are on Facebook. How many of you have been hacked by Facebook? They've already got your information where you live. Jack, you just scared us all to death. I'm trying to. I want our children to be safe. Thanks be unto God that one day these evil people will be stopped and all children will be safe when Jesus rules and reigns on this earth. Jack, why are you talking about child trafficking for today? Because Christmas is about children. We've made it that way, which is good. Children love Christmas. Nothing wrong with that. But we need to teach them it's about Jesus and we need to keep our children safe. They depend upon you. You know, there are people in this world that will sell their children to child traffickers. What kind of monsters are they? I pray and I know one day all children will be safe when Jesus rules and reigns on this earth. They'll play with a lion. I was watching a, a thing about a man playing with his lions. He had 60 lions as pets. Not the brightest bulb in the, in the set, but anyway, the lions loved him and he was playing with them and I was thinking, that's how little children will play with a ferocious lion. The lions rolled over and he pet their belly. They loved that. A little child will pet a lion's belly. You know, that's what Jesus does to the earth. What the wicked one does to the earth, he wants to destroy children. He wants the lions to devour children. But Jesus wins. He always wins. The gospel wins. The cross is a symbol of defeat. Was a symbol of defeat. Is now a symbol of victory forever and ever. Thanks be unto God. Secondly, this gift is unspeakable. 2 Corinthians 9.15 says, For His unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Indescribable, precious, beyond words. Unspeakable means words cannot describe this. Words are not sufficient. Extraordinary, incredible, priceless. Can you describe sufficiently what Jesus has done for you? Can you? Never take it for granted, this great salvation that Jesus has given to us. Unspeakable. We'll have all eternity to try to figure out this great salvation and still be wondering why God saved us the way He did. Never take it for granted. Hebrews 2.3 says, 2, says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them which heard Him. Jesus gave us great, so great salvation. That's the best way the writer of Hebrews could describe it. So great salvation. He just didn't have the words to describe how great it is. Listen, it's unspeakable, extraordinary, incredible. The most incredible thing that's ever happened to me and you is that we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. How will you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Where else, what else can compare? What else can save you? Can the government save you? Can a guru save you? Can a religion save you? Can you save yourself? Can Spider-Man save you? And other Spider-Man movies come out. We're going to worship Spider-Man for a while. And... Doctor Strange does a spell, satanic spell, in this movie. It's the gist of the whole movie is a satanic spell. Now, I love Spider-Man, uh, but it's getting so satanic, so satanic, 
They want us to worship these creatures that actually can do things and have superpowers. People worship superpowers and superheroes. You know, when we rule and reign with Jesus Christ, we're not going to be doing it from a 1960 Winnebago or a 1955 Ford Galaxy, which is a nice car. Don't know about the Winnebago. We're going to have supernatural superpowers and abilities like Jesus did. He could appear in a room, walk through a wall. He could eat fish and still appear out of nowhere. Time had no constraint on him. Walls had no constraint. So why do we want the powers of this world? You know, they say there's an AI that's going to make us all superhuman. <clears throat> They're going to preserve our brains and our conscience and make us all superhumans. They're trying to figure out a way to transplant the human head to a robot. Oh, Jack, that's science fiction. No, it's not. It's going on today. Elon Musk is trying to get your consciousness in a computer. They know how to do it. God will stop that. That's why Jesus is coming soon. That's one of the reasons we are going farther than the book of Revelation says we'll go in technology. We have the ability to do some things that are incredible, that unbelievable. But not one iota of the power you will have when you're in your resurrection body ruling and reigning with Christ. We can't even describe it. I'm not after superpower. I mean, it's going to be nice. But I just want to serve Jesus and be where He's at, right? Don't you? I just want to do what He wants me to do. And because I know He loves me. God's great love for us. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in His mercy, for His great love, wherewith, wherewith He loved us. He loves us. This is why He gives us an unspeakable gift. Now listen, when you want to give gifts to your children, you want to give them something they'll always remember. That that's really special to them. And they make their Christmas great. Because why? You can't stand them. You want to shut them up. That's the real reason, isn't it? No. You love them. You love them so much. You want them to be happy. Do you think God loves His children any less than a human loves their children? We can't even describe God's love for us. A lot of things I'm saying today are indescribable. God's love. God's salvation. Because you know why? It comes from the great God. The greatest of all. God, our Father, our Lord, our Creator. Rich in His mercy for His great love wherein He loved us. John 3.16 says again, For God so loved the world. A great love leads to a great action and that leads to a great salvation. God is great in Himself. Isaiah 40.28 Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting Lord, a God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of His understanding. God never gets tired of saving people. God never gets tired of providing for his children we get tired we we love to see our grandchildren come we love to see them go no we we hate to see them go but not too much uh, want them to come again real not real soon but soon enough listen uh I've been blessed to have grandchildren in my old age. That's when you usually have them, right? Uh, unexpected, I guess I should say. Isaiah, hast thou not known? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? That God, the Lord, the Creator, never gets tired, never gets weary of doing good. And you can't understand what He's doing. Not all of it. And that's good. If I could understand all what God is doing, what would that make me? I would be God. I don't want to be God. I want Him to be God. He's got this. He's got everything. Because He is God. Thanks be to God alone, this gift that He's given us is unspeakable. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. And finally, thanks be unto God for this greatest gift. Thanks be unto God for the gift now, a gift is something given that is not earned or worked for. 
usually given out of love with no strings attached. Grace is God's gift to us. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. A son is given to us, given for free, no strings attached, for free. It's a free gift. And... We, as a world, as a population, most of us have not accepted this gift. We don't want anything to do with it. Ephesians 4, 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everybody can be saved by faith in Jesus Christ in this grace of God. Every human has been given the opportunity to be saved by the grace of God. Some will, most won't accept this gift. The gift of salvation is by grace through faith alone. If you're saved by grace, you're kept by works, right? No, you're saved by grace, you're kept by grace. Christ is seen here in Ephesians 4, 7 as distributing spiritual gifts to His people. God not only saves us by His grace, but He gives gifts to us by His grace. Gifts of service. The faithful stewardship of our gifts on earth will determine our position of service in Christ's messianic reign. Spiritual gifts are given to the church so that we can serve Him with purpose and clarity. God doesn't want a cookie-cutter cookie, a cookie cutter Christian. <clears throat> Say that real fast. A cookie-cutter Christian. He wants us all to be unique and different like a snowflake. <clears throat> but we're not snowflakes. We don't melt in any criticism, right? Ephesians 4.8 says... Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Paul is quoting Psalm 68, 18. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. This pictures the ascended Messiah triumphant over Satan and his hosts. Many people take this when he says ascended uh, up on high, he led captivity captive, pictures Christ entering hell, specifically the saved portion of the unseen world of Hades, after his crucifixion to take the saints to heaven when he rose from the dead. He gave gifts unto men so that they might serve him to their joy and to God's glory. God gives gifts unto men and he gives every man the gift of faith. All they have to do is exercise that gift. To have faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Every human can have faith to trust in Jesus Christ if they will. God has given us that gift of faith if we exercise it. What a blessing it is that God has given gifts so that we might serve Him. Every person has been given a spiritual gift. Every saved person has been given a spiritual gift or gifts that he uses, he sh she uses in service to God and His kingdom. What a blessing it is that God gives us special gifts to serve Him with. We don't have to try to figure out what God wants us to do. Once we trust in Jesus Christ and walk with Him and follow Him each day, He will show our gifts, what gifts we have. They will show up, actually. He doesn't have to show us. They'll show up in your life. Romans eleven twenty nine. 29, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God will not reclaim His gifts to us. Now, sometimes you might got, get mad at your children and give them a Christmas present December 24th, and by March the 3rd, give me that stuff back. You're never going to use it. Give me it back. Or I want all my stuff back from you. That's called an Indian giver, right? Why do they call it that? Because the Indians would give... Uh, gifts to the white man and come back three months later and raid them and take the gifts back. Uh, that's not Indian giving. That's taking advantage of dumb white men. Right? Uh, silly man. You know I'm going to steal these three months later. <laughs> Listen. God will not change his mind. He will not recall the gifts he's given to you. Now you can fail to use them as a Christian. But he's not going to reclaim them. 
Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The first and foremost gift given to men is the gift of salvation. No other gift compares. All other gifts fade in comparison to this one gift because you can't have the other gifts of service if you don't accept the gift of salvation. All other gifts should remind us of this greatest of gifts. The worst gift giving. What was your worst gift? We asked you that earlier. Probably given by someone who didn't really care about you. Well, when the two witnesses are killed during the midpoint of the tribulation, it will, the world will give gifts to each other. Did you know that? Revelation 11.10 And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them, the two witnesses that they murder in the midpoint of the tribulation, these men who preach the gospel, and make merry. They're going to make merry and send gifts one to another. Sounds like Christmas to me. Could be the two witnesses are killed in the middle of the Christmas holiday. These two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Preaching during the tribulation will torment people. <laughs> I'd say let's torment them right now with the preaching of the gospel. That's awful that the world be in such a shape that they're tormented by the preaching. Now listen. People will run out and stop their ears if they hear certain preachers. And the worst thing, you can be killed for preaching in other countries, but in America, you know how, to, what, how they try to kill you? They try to make you stupid and ignorant and try to take away your sense. They, they say you're crazy, you're insane, you need help, you're not informed. They try to destroy you in the community or among the, your peers. They try to destroy your job, your income. So which is worse? To know they're going to kill you if you preach the gospel or to kill you by a thousand paper cuts? Slowly hack you to death. Listen. The worst reason for giving gifts ever was in the history of the world is giving gifts to celebrate the death of two of the greatest preachers in the history of the world. But boy, let me tell you, they're going to change their tune in three and a half days. Revelation 11, 11. After three days and a half, at noon, whatever, the Spirit of the life of God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear upon, fell upon them which saw them. Their Christmas tree fell over. Santa Claus collapsed. The wicked gift-giving turns out to be a disaster. Could this happen at Christmas time again? Another, another wicked gift given in the Bible, Mark 6, chapter, 20, chapter 6, verse 22. And when the daughter of Salome had said of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and sat, and then that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee, and up to half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said to her mother, What shall I ask? And they said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry. Yes, he was exceeding sorry. A sorry king. Yet for the oaths, his oath's sake and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. You know, most evil things done in the world is because of pride. People don't have enough pride to say, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. You said you were, your word, your honor. Well, nah, most evil things done are people that don't want to admit they were wrong and swallow their pride. But he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought and went and beheaded him in prison. And he brought his head in a charger, that's a big serving plate, and gave it to the damsel. Gave it! And the damsel gave it to her mother. Herod gifted Salome, and Salome gifted her mother. Historian Josephus Flavius tells us that Salome, Herod, and Herodias, Salome's mother, were in exile. And here's how you always wonder, what happened to Salome, the girl? How did we get her name? It comes from historian Josephus Flavius in the first century. He says, here's what happened to the girl that danced for the head of John the Baptist, who gave a gift of a head to, his, to her mother. Here's what happened to her. As Salome was passing over a frozen river, the ice broke. Now, Herod and Herodias were sent in exile from Rome. 
they weren't executed, they were sent in exile. And Salome loved her mother and her stepfather so much, she wanted to go with them. So she left her husband, Philip, that the Bible tells us, but the Bible doesn't tell us this story, but she was married to Philip and Herodotus' brother. Herodotus, Herod's brother. So they are exiled. She goes with them because she loves them so much. So as they're being exiled, it's during the winter, and they were passing over a frozen river. The ice broke, and it is said that Salome fell into the water, and there, that her body wriggled and danced in the cold water until the ice severed her head. <laughs> She was caught up to her neck in the ice and she was dancing and shivering until the ice severed her head. Herodias died evidently in exile. We don't know what happened to her. There's no more reference to her after she was exiled. Gifts can be good and gifts can be wicked. God never gives wicked gifts, but He does give justice and judgment. We don't want that. We need mercy and grace, not justice and judgment. People of pride say, just give me what I deserve. <laughs> Don't ever say that to God. <laughs> we deserve hell. And He'll give it to you if you reject Jesus Christ. Sure. Hey, most people in hell are going to say, I asked for this. I asked for this. Most people in hell will agree with God. I asked for this. I rejected Jesus Christ. I'm getting what I deserve. Listen, but God's gift is salvation. He wants to give us salvation, justification instead of justice, salvation instead of judgment. Thanks be to God alone. This gift is unspeakable. The greatest gift is God's greatest gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. God's greatest gift to the world is Jesus Christ. But not just Jesus' birth, but His death, burial, and resurrection, and the salvation made possible through Him. The question is, have you received this greatest gift of all? Why not? What could possibly be more important than that? We've all said this from time to time. What was I thinking? Well, what are you thinking when you reject Jesus Christ? I've seen outgoing, entertaining, motor mouth personalities just clam up when you ask them why they haven't received Jesus Christ. I've witnessed to people that would talk nonstop about anything, but you say, okay, let's get down to brass tacks. Why haven't you accepted Jesus Christ? They have no answer. They just sit there like a statue. They don't want to tell you that they're not ready yet or don't want to yet. That's what they really mean. They don't want to tell you, I'm not ready. So they just say, nothing. What they're really saying is, I don't want to. They don't want to. Yet someday, yes, right now, no. Someday, yes, right now, no. That's their answer. Well, that's fine except for two things. You may not get another opportunity. Secondly, you may get a hard heart. John 12, 40. He had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with the heart and be converted that I should heal them. That should scare us to death. Today is a day of salvation. Trust in God's Son, Jesus Christ, the greatest of all gifts.